Hi everybody, so I would like to do a brief discussion on this chapter, uh, the role of narrative in recollection. So, uh, where is this? Install on quit. So basically the idea behind this um, chapter is to propose, you know, the, the, the Rubin and Greenberg, they're both trying to um, look at the underlying neurobiological basis of what they call narrative reasoning. Um, from my perspective, I'm probably less interested in the biological basis of uh, narrative reasoning and more interested in narrative reasoning itself. So basically how he defines narrative reasoning as well as um, you know what potential implications uh, this concept of narrative reasoning uh, might have for uh, for for uh, the scientific discourse, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to expose my 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 perception from the get go, from the beginning here, and I'm going to say that I believe that narrative reasoning is, by and large, you know, a huge component of what we call reasoning or human reasoning. Um, I'm not going to say it's the only component, but it's because uh, I also believe in, in tacit uh, components of, uh, 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 of reasoning, if you want to call that reasoning. Uh, but I think it's, it's a major component of what we call human reasoning. So I'm going to jump right into the sections that I think are more relevant for uh, this argument. In the basically you know, going into some of the definitions that they provide. So, you know, basically their paper is about, like, you know, reviewing the literature. Um, so, you know, they start by saying that coher co coherent narrative requires judgments of empathy, relevance, and theme. Um, and uh, then a very, very important point that they make is that the events are perceived as having a causal or thematic coherence. Now, whenever you're talking about, you know, the definition of narrative reasoning, uh, I believe that, you know, this has to be fully specified. And whenever you talk about uh, uh, something like having causal or thematic, uh, thematic uh, coherence, that's a very vague statement. What exactly does perception of cause means? Um, so, for example, if I see uh, 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 that, uh, you know, the sun shows up every day when I'm taking my breakfast, uh, does that mean that my breakfast is causing the sun? So, of course, you know, there's a huge literature in terms of what causality means. Uh, but from a cognitive perspective, it's not very clear what, uh, what, uh, uh, what's meant here. Uh, he has some extremely good points in relation to the so social nature of narrative reasoning. And uh, I, I, I very strongly believe this. I believe that one of the, the, the major roles of, uh, of the narrative uh, is to establish social cohesion. So if you and I believe that a narrative uh, belongs to us, therefore, you know, we're closer together. If both of us believe in the reasoning of, uh, behind a given narrative, we're close to each other, or we're closer. Um, he also has some extremely important points here in relation to what he calls flashbulb memories. And I've been using this concept in a number of different, um, in a number of different papers and texts that I've been working on over the last uh, several months, actually. Uh, but basically, the idea behind flashbulb memories is that um, you have what he calls canonical categories. Uh, and flashbulb memories are basically something that will create the feeling of immersion, will create the feeling of uh, that you can recollect uh, 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 those memories more easily than the, the, the ones that don't have these canon canonical uh, categories. And basically what he defines as the 
canonical categories for flashbulb memories are place, ongoing event, informant, effect in others, effect in self, and uh, aftermath. <coughs> so basically, again, as I mentioned, uh, you know, flashbulb, the way I, I, I interpret flashbulb memories is that they provide sort of the situation, if you're thinking in terms of situated cognition, uh, the situation surrounding a given, for example, an image that will make that memory uh, stick. Um, uh, then, you know, he has, a, again, he keeps talking, you know, the primary uh, goal of his paper is to talk about autobiographical reasoning. Um, but I believe that, you know, this is about not only autobiographies, but, you know, narrative reasoning in general. Uh, and he mentions a few other things. So, you know, temporal coherence, uh, so basically the idea um, that, you know, things should follow a certain pattern. So if somebody went from Durham to New York uh, today, tomorrow they have to be in New York. Tomorrow they cannot be in Durham uh, all over again. Um, causal coherence, I mentioned this already, um, you know, that this is not fully specified even though there's a big literature, I would be very interested in, in his definition of what ca the perception of causation means. Uh, themari uh, thematic uh, coherence, also not clear at all. Um, you know, what exactly does a theme mean? Uh, so if I see wings and, uh, you know, airplanes, are we talking about the same thing? Uh, you know, do we have a common theme here? Um, and the cultural concept of biography. So basically, you know, what that means, uh, uh, you know, this idea of, um, of uh, like, a chain of events that leads up to the, the present moment or the, the final moment in somebody's lives. Uh, uh, one of the things that, you know, he's going to be talking about over and over again is that... Um, you know, the relationship between narrative reasoning and imaging. So the argument he makes, you know, throughout, consistently throughout the, 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 the paper is that in order to have narrative reasoning, you need both semantic understanding. So in other words, understanding about the meaning of uh, uh, what's being said. And the second thing is the importance of images. So what he's saying is, uh, uh, for example, knowing how, <clears throat> how to state certain words is not as important for narrative reasoning as, for example, having a semantic meaning and having an image meaning. And, uh, you know, he gives several neural uh, uh, clinical cases uh, where people had, a, 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 you know, destruction of certain brain areas uh, where they had difficulty in speaking, uh, speech difficulties, uh, and where narrative reasoning was not affected. However, whenever they had a, a problem um, with areas where uh, images were processed, uh, narrative reasoning would be affected. So this video to be continued.